Joining us now, of course, she is the head coach at CSUN, fresh off the leading the program to their first postseason berth since 2015. She was a three-time All-American at Alabama, two-time SEC Player of the Year, two-time Top 10 finalist for National Player of the Year, former commentator. She's done it all in the sport. I speak of Charlotte Morgan here with us on In the Circle. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm glad to be back and I appreciate you you giving us some love and always enjoy being able to get up here and, and talk about what we love. I know you're like on our bucket list to get you on for more of the longer <laughs> version. We've had you on live and talking about other pro teams and postseason, which you know a lot about. And speaking of postseason, I'd be remiss. Let's start there. When you look back at last year, uh 28 and 24, you won your last nine regular season games. Finished third in the Big West, which is we'll get into as a two bid league. Uh, mm -hmm. And you got into the first postseason for the program since 2015 as you participated in the NISC. When you reflect on last year, what comes to mind? I think growth. I think that, um, you know, when you, you take over a program and, and you're building it from inside out, um, we talk about laying that foundation, um, you know, and we've really tried to do it the right way and, and do it. Um, with good people and, you know, just work hard and, and, and have our standards and, and everything. And so, you know, it's, it's unique. Cause I've gone through, you know, I got hired in the middle of COVID and, you know, a couple of our first classes, we recruited them through zoom or on the phone, you know, and we, we, we finally, I think last year, you know, we got a couple that we were able to look at a couple of times. So I think it was unique in the essence of like taking over a program and then, you know, the, the challenges that we face. But I think what was really cool is when you look at the growth with our players is I think that you saw them playing for each other. And I think when you see that and you see from the internal that they're a strong unit, um, you know, we always tell them, we don't need you guys to be best friends away, but we need you to respect each other and love each other. And um, we're a family here. We're going to like each other on good days and bad days, you know, but we can't give up on each other. And I think, um, you know, we we kind of got a little taste of what success is, um, but we also had to learn how to win. You know, I think that that also people always talk about, oh, you got to learn how to lose. You got to learn how to win. You got to learn how to have the the target on your back. You you know, we had to win out to to potentially get that berth um for the NISC and and at the end we were we were right there with it if Fullerton took all three you know we could have finished second so I think um you know being one of the teams that um took the series from Long Beach the only team in conference to do that um you know it was hard for them too when we lost some games that they knew we needed to take care of um but I'm glad it happened because you know we tell them the game's not just going to reward us because we work hard or we do things right um, we are going to have to continue to work on the little things and continue to win and continue to lose. And we have to continue to grow. And I think seeing that and, and seeing the growth, a lot of people always think about, you know, it takes about three to four years to kind of get your system going, you know, and honestly, it was our second full year. And um, I think what it shows is, you know, I think my staff and, and myself, we've brought in some really good people um and and good families and people that are bought into what we're we're building here um and want to be here and i think um them being able to get that we're excited you know we have a rich history so there's no reason we don't and so but what we told them is that we're sustaining this we are now just this is the new standard we haven't even met it yet so we're still getting there and i think um i was very happy to do you know you know me i'm pretty modest and I'm pretty low key. So I don't like to talk too much, but I am proud of them. And I told him that, but what I told him is that at the end, it should have left them hungry because they knew they were capable of more. And so, um, that's why, you know, kind of our mentality and what we've gone into this fall, um, and also into what they did through the summer, um, has been that, that thought process. I think it's more remarkable for those that may not be aware you were hired I believe in December of 2020. Is that accurate? Yeah, so you got, not only were you hired during the whole pandemic where you couldn't recruit in person and things like that, you got hired late. Like that's late. That's beyond a, what would have been a normal fall, which wasn't nothing was normal that in that time period. I get that. So you're basically starting from scratch and learning on the fly in that first season in 2021. 
If you go to 2022, you get an 18 win improvement from the first year to the second year. And then the third year, like you mentioned, you make the postseason. All right, do you feel in a way that maybe you're even more ahead of scheduling than you should be, all things considered? I mean, if you look at it by that, yes. You know, and I think that, um, am I surprised? No. Um, because, and, and you know me, um, you know, the way we lead is, we're very honest here. It's it, the way we run our system is we have our, you know, team one, you it's family, one standard and everything we do. And it's your choice to hold your part. And I think what you have seen is we've stayed strict to what our program's about. And that means in the classroom in in the community as people and as softball players. And so they're student athletes, um, but they're also daughters. They're also, you know, partners They're they are a lot more. And so I think, you know, with doing all that and, you know, for me, and, and and maybe because I haven't had the the easiest um, or traditional upbringing um, my whole life, but I've been dealt with a lot of challenges and obstacles. And, you know, you either face it or it, it faces you, you know? And so I just believe like whatever comes at us, we're going to take it and we're going to learn from it and we're going to move on. Um, we're not going to dwell. We're not going to be Oh, I got hired here. So it gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Oh, we don't like, no, the expectation is the standard. Um, and our standard is excellence and everything. It's a champion mentality in everything that we do. Um, and so, you know, me and my staff, there's nothing else that we think of there. There is no, Oh, well, that's okay for today. Like, no, like we, we've got to be better. Um, and I think because they've had that consistency since day one, um, from the first time that I met my team on Zoom, I had no coaches. I couldn't hire coaches. Big West didn't even know if we were going to play in the spring um, to when we finally got the OK, I got to hire one coach. Then my second coach, I met him for the first time at the first day of practice. I brought him down from Washington State. And so, you know, meeting the team and my staff was all together on the first day. And we're in LA, which was a hotbed. So everything was very delayed. We were, we were shut down when the other world was open. Um, but again, it's time for growth. And I, I think that I love adversity. You know, I, everything I've ever done, um, I want it hard and, and that's how it should be. And so um, I'm just, I'm very lucky to have had a staff stick around with me. Um, and then we've brought, you know, Terry um, Schweiker on staff the last two years, but having consistency for our players our student athletes, that's huge. You know, with all the coaching changes, that doesn't happen. So I think we've been able to build a house that is strong because of our consistency from the top down and having good people around us. And um, people say, yeah, we're ahead of schedule, but I'm excited. Now Now we're just keep raising that bar and that that's how it should be. When was that turn or turning point where you felt like, okay, the players are kind of figuring it out, how to win, like you mentioned, learning how to win. Was it that Long Beach series? Because I remember when you beat Long Beach and you won that series, a lot of people took notice. As we'll get into, those a, a dramatic year in the Big West. I mean, mm -hmm. it, you were in the mix in the race. Uh, UCSB under Coach Evans was in the mix there. Like, this was a, a wild fun uh, with plenty of storylines in the Big West, and it ended up with a two-bid league, which is a success for the league, and you got into the postseason. Was that the turning point? Um, Honestly, I think when we talk as a staff, um, when we took a trip to Arizona, um, we had some pretty bad luck in our preseason with tournaments and games getting played really late because of delays. We lost a pretty big game um, to Nebraska, and um, – we even, you know, we lost some tough games um, to Notre Dame and stuff um, on ASU and opening. And so we tough, we do a tough preseason, but in Arizona, we're away. They're tired. We're playing. Um, they lost that tough game. They got a sense of what losing felt like. And I think when you're in it and you're, 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 you're just toe to toe, I think that it's not really a sense of what winning is to us. Cause I think we're still learning that to be honest, if you saw, we went to and out and then I see, which was embarrassing, but it needed to happen. Right. And so we still have to learn how to win, but I think what they saw was we had some tough losses. And if I could be, a, if I ever, if you asked me pick, do you want your team to learn how to win or you want them to learn how to lose? I want them to learn how to lose. 
because we're going to fail way more than succeeding in this sport and everything that they do. And they failed a lot in preseason. Um, and I think that when we got to conference, when we weren't traveling, we weren't having four to five games. We weren't waiting around for game breaks. You know, it's pretty, you got your routine going, right? And the conference slowed down for them. And I think that they saw, okay, we we know what it, we faced some tough. We faced some of the best pitching in the country. We faced some really good postseason teams, um, which is why Fullerton and a lot of our teams are playing those tough people in preseason. Um, and so I think when they got it, they, okay, well, we've been down before. We got this. Like they had that belief because they've been there, but we didn't come out on the 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 right side every time. And I think that's why when then the pressure on the down stretch is you have to be over 500 you have to, you know, be able to do that for the NFC. All of that is real. Like you can't hide that from the my student athletes. But what comes with that is seeing that pressure. They've known, okay, well, we've been there. So we can handle it. We got to take care of business. But if we do it our way, we'll be fine. And I think it helped them, you know, take care of some of those games that needed to be taken care of that maybe other people didn't understand the importance of it. Um but they were able to, you know, take that series against Long Beach at home. We talk about protecting our house, you know, and it got, it was a feisty games. It was, it was pretty heated, which I love, you know, I love the competition. And so I think that, you know, we talk about it as a staff, that Arizona trip was huge. And I, we think that that was a big turning point for us and, and they grew closer and then when they got into conference, they they learned and then they lost a couple games that they were like, we had to, we needed to win that. And I'm like, yeah, we did, but we didn't. So so now where do we get to? What's the drawing board? We can't control what other teams do in conference, but we can control what we do. And so that was kind of where they turned their focus back to. And once we were able to get them focused back on themselves, I think they were able to take care of business like they did. Talk about now this fall. What has it been like as you get going uh, with this group? Because, you you know, what what's the message to this particular group, the 2024 edition? Um, so, you know, we're actually feel like a program um, this fall. We we have our system in place. Um, our returners, you know, we have a good solid junior class. We have a, we only have two seniors. So we have a big junior sophomore. We brought in, I think, 13 this year. So another big class. But we have people in the system that know how we do it. And so it's kind of nice to to see we're like, wow, we're not repeating ourselves 50 times, maybe 25, you know, and um, our returners have done a great job taking the, the you know, newcomers under their wings, um, which has been big to see. And then I think what we have done is one of the, the things that we had in our end of last year was they thought the little things needed to be more focused on because that's what it comes down to. And so um, we listened to our players. And um, so as a staff, we talked about it over summer and um, we're like, Hey, what do we got to do? What do we need to do for them to understand? You know, it's a different generation. You know that I don't have to go into that. Um, and so right now they have to earn their logo. And so as a team, and so they don't all their shirts. If you see any of our stuff, it's blank right now. And um, what we did is if they need to earn it as a team, do the little things the way that CSUN softball, our standard in the classroom, in the community, in the weight room, in the you know training room, in the locker room, and on the field. Um, it's not about, we're not looking at results. We're looking at accountability. We're looking at, are they taking those little things? Do they see what really matters? Are they getting the big picture um, and so they have to earn that as a unit. And, you know, when you go to school, you all want the cool gear, right? That's like the cool thing. Um, and so I told them they all have earned the right to be here, but they all have to earn the right to represent this university. And so that is as a unit. We don't want one person or half. We want everyone in all in together. And um, it's been really unique um to see and, and that's kind of been the drive we have some two-way players we have some pitchers that are shortstop middle infield outfielders we brought athleticism in some of our transfers we've brought in um we have Mackenzie Simpedra behind the you know plate has a great arm Kinza Keela um from 
ECU, um, Chavez from L um, ULM. So we brought some people that have been away from home, have a little bit of college experience. We brought a really elite freshman class in. So I think right now we have a good mix and, but we're focusing on the, the details and they're doing that as a unit. And so that's kind of what we've kind of done. Um, and it's actually really nice. It's, we're like, we're a program. We're kind of, we're, we have our system in place and, and that's been the, the, the nice part to see this fall. Who are the leaders? Do you have the leaders? Do you assign leaders? Do they kind of, does it just kind of stand out either with their play or with their words? Who, who stands out as the leaders? You know, I think um, we, ha you know, you always have plans, right? And uh, one thing I, 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 I do do well adjusting is we thought we were going to have like a leadership council and, and this and that, right? But then as we got in, we used to have big sister, little sister. We used to have, you know, certain ones be leaders. But um, I think as we got in is we they're still needing to be a unit. And so um, we expect the returners and the the expectation here, just like at Bama, you know, when I went there, they told me, hey, the half gassers, you got to pass. Like those returners let me knew like, hey, Murph is, is he if you're not 15 minutes, the bus is leaving and he will leave you like those are things they told me right he didn't have to tell me they told me and so um you know we've had that little bit of a group that's been here that is leading that way um we'll reach out to some of the seniors you know i've taken the seniors out um had lunch we meet we do check-ins um but we're kind of still trying to identify who's going to be the vocal who's going to be you know taking care of those things but um we felt, you know, and, and I really felt is if we identify right now, they can take a lot of heat one way or the other. Right. And so I think um, for us is let's see who evolves. We're still young. We're still bringing in a lot. And let's see who who evolves into those roles. Um, <laughs> and so we have different level of expectations for for different players. But at the end of the day, I felt like the freshman last year kind of, oh, well, I don't know I'm new or, oh, you know, my big sister didn't like, no, 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 no. You're not responsible just for your one. Like you're responsible for the whole team. And and that's what with earning their logo, I want them to understand. You don't do what you have to do and you get suspended academically, right? Because you don't go to your meetings or you don't pass your class. You affect the team, not just yourself. Like, and I think them understanding that every, every choice they make affects the team. And, um, we really wanted to stay in that team aspect, um, because, uh, we're still getting that piece together, you know, and, and getting them to play together as that unit. And it's been really fun to see. Um, we ask every day who ate today, um, at the end and, and they, that's a time to say like, man, you know. Keila, I saw you, you've been really working on some stuff in the cage and I saw in BP, it started paying off like, or, Hey, you know, Shay, every time I needed a ride, you're always there to, you know, pick me up or, you know, when we had a freshman struggling, she's like, I just, she named a couple of players. Like, thank you for being there. I wasn't emotionally there today, but you guys helped me get through. And so at that, that that's given them a time to recognize each other. And I think um, that is how we're building that. And so right now we're not saying, Oh, you're a captain, you're a leader, you're this, um, you know, I'm going to go to some of our seniors that there's some issues. Hey, clean this up. Let's go, you know, lead it. Let's go. Um, and then we're also going to pull some other people aside, you know, and then kind of identify, but I think we're still, we're still getting that solid piece that successful programs have, which is that, that mindset of this is how we do it, you know, and we're, we're still, we had success early, but man, we're still, we are not going to forget about that internal piece. And and that's something that we're making sure as a staff and a team that we're focusing on. Of course, one of the pieces there was your, in last year, the pitching staff, Lauren uh, Karinko, the freshman pitcher of the year in the league. Just talk about your pitching staff. So uh, it, this year led by her, obviously had the great year last year uh, and what you expect. Yeah, I think both our freshmen, um, Bella Alonzo and um, Lauren, uh, you know, Bella was really hot early, um, early in the Big West. Um, and uh, Lowe kind of came on later as the season came through. And, and you know, Lowe's a strikeout pitcher. She throws harder. 
um bell's a contact um but she's a fighter man um and so really those were the only two we had returning out of our whole staff so they went from freshmen to leading the staff and they're like whoa coach like we're we're leading i'm like yeah let's go like let's do it um but you know with me being the pitching coach i spent a lot of time with them um on how to manage how to handle um how to get messages across and so obviously there there are only two po's um they're the only pitcher onlys on our team we had um four pitchers come in um really three uh we have uh, a freshman from Arizona, um, AO. She will also, she plays outfield a little bit, but she'll be in the circle quite a bit. Um, her mentality is huge. She'll put her team on her back. Um, she's she's just a fighter. She's going to find a way. She might not be the flashiest, um, but she'll find a way. So it's been exciting to have her. Um, and then Jersey um, and Alexia are two middles. Jersey's from Hawaii and Alexia is local and um, they both play short second. So you're going to see them playing defense, but they also bring some tools to the mound too. And so um, I think, you know, those three freshmen are going to give us time. Um, you know, I think Jersey and Alexia, you'll see them depending on defense and things like that. Um, you know, AO and then low and bell will, will be more of our, probably more of our inning eaters if we need it. Um, and then we have a, another freshman, Lulu, who actually is, you see her throw in the outfield, she throws right-handed, but she hits left and then she pitches left-handed. So that's, yeah. Right. So she throws. Right. And she outfield. has a cannon. Yeah. Okay. And she Wait. pitches left-handed. How? Wait, how does that happen? What's the so story her, there? Her dad grew up playing baseball to a berg and when she was growing up she was a lefty but he wanted her to be able to play more positions in the infield so she became a righty so he had her throw right-handed learn how to throw right-handed and then she ended up being an outfielder <laughs> so um yeah Not sure i've out. ever heard of that before I I've, I've, I've heard of players <laughs> that can pitch with both uh righty and lefty which are unique i don't know if that's something that we could develop there but that's I that's know. wild and she has a really good overhand throw right-handed. That's the insane part about it. So, um, you know, well, depending on, you know, we didn't recruit her to pitch, but we didn't get a lefty on staff. So we might add her in the mix too, um, here and there, but, you know, I think we're young, but I can tell you from, from the staff standpoint, their mentalities and, um, it's, it's fun. Like I have a fun time. Cause it's like, all right, like, they're going to compete. They're going to, none, none, all of them will put the team on their back, you know, and, and to have low and, and bell have their success last year and, and do really well. It's now fine tuning them, making them look a little different so that they can have success and then make sure that we're complimenting everyone. And so that's been the fun part, but um, we're young in the circle, but we're not, you know, I, I don't feel young. Like I, I, we have a little bit of the, some of the jitters, but some of those, growing pains you get from from being a younger staff I, I i feel really good that we might we won't have those or if we do i think we'll be able to minimize them and and handle them it's well uh, you're well documented you're one of the great two-way players ever <laughs> so you of all people know when you see a two-way player is that what do you look for when you see a two-way player what, what, what are some mentality. of the aspects their mentality yeah. their athleticism obviously they're going to have their athleticism um but what's their mentality you know can they get lit up in the circle and still go play short you know like when I got lit up at Florida I still had to go play first and be our three four hitter so you kind of have to have that grit you're gonna have to have that like short-term memory a little bit or be able to to separate and that comes with maturity and a lot can't do that at this level it's really hard um and so um you know we've talked with them we've told them you know I'll manage you. We have to manage them because the two infielders are shortstops and they're throwing a lot. They're active. So managing them, I've never had a shortstop or a second baseman as my pitcher, like maybe a first baseman, you know, maybe a third, but like sometimes an outfield, but to be a middle, like it's a totally different management. So, um, you know, we've been managing them, managing their velocities, managing their, their workloads, 
working really close with my my coach coach Bergeron who does the infield and out you know Terry when I have the outfield and then our hitting so you know because I have the experience I feel very confident that I can manage them very well um, and so far they they've trusted it because you know their leader was one so we just got to continue to manage them and listen to them and you're doing the pitch calling because I'm a, it's unique because again you're a, you are a two-way <laughs> player I've talked to other coaches that were two-way players. Some of them still call you'll know, call the game as if they were the pitcher from the pitcher's mm -hmm. perspective. Some though, I've talked to like calling it as as they were a hitter's perspective because they know what a hitter's thinking, so they try to outguess the hitter. Uh Stacy Newman, who has picked up pitch calling, uh obviously at San Diego State, she comes from the catching perspective and everything. What mm -hmm. is what perspective do you come when you're doing pitch call? Are you doing it? as the pitch from a pitcher's mindset? Are you thinking as a hitter's mindset when you're pitch calling? What what mindset do you, what back you, angle you come from? Um, I can't give you all my tricks because, you know, and it exploits me, but uh, <laughs> no, seriously, um, I think the one thing that when I played was I was really good at picking up tendencies. I was really picking up mannerisms, um, flaws, different things that um, some pitchers that were just pitchers probably wouldn't pick up um so i watch everything i watch what my pitchers feeling how they're feeling how they've been locating I, I see where their confidence but then i also you know i have all my data right we all have our data we have all this stuff but i don't get locked lost into numbers i i, I really try to be like i'm in the game and um, I look at the hitter. I look at them on deck. I look at, okay, what adjustments are they doing? I look at what adjustments are they doing after each pitch? I look at what the what is the coach telling them? What is the situation? Um, did they make a box, box adjustment that I could see? You know, um, what are they thinking I want, we're going to throw? So maybe I'm going to throw exactly the opposite, you know, um, which is maybe unconventional for some, right? Some people might go with, the pitcher's best pitch, but what if we can get her out with two less pitches because we're we're able to freeze her on something? And so, you know, I think there's there's a lot that goes into on the backside of studying. And then um I go with the feel, you know, I, I love facing good hitters that have good plans because my job's to pick your plan apart and then adjust, right? And and I have to be able to adjust as the hitters are adjusting and as the offensive coach on the other team, you know, when I see Sam Martyr, when we're playing Oregon, you know, she's right there talking to him constantly, you know, they're, they're always changing. So um, I think it's just kind of being a student, talking to the pitchers too, seeing what they're feeling, see what, you know, so I think it goes into like a whole thing because there has to be trust from every side. And, and that's something, you know, even with my infield coach, Coach Bergeron, we talk about the shifts. We talk about how we're going to set up people, you know, like there's so much that goes into it. Um, and I think that, you know, being able to have that knowledge and and work within our staff and then also work with our players um, that we are, we're able to do well, you know, and, and, and call for maybe we don't have the fastest pitcher or the most movement, but you can hit your spots, you can locate, you can trust, and we can mix well, you know, and, and those are things that we try to work on. Um, yeah. It's just so fascinating because <laughs> I, you have, you know what every, uh, the hitter in the box is feeling because you felt those feelings and mm -hmm. you know what a pitcher is feeling because it's your very unique perspective. You know what yeah. everybody's feeling in that matchup, uh, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, I know you've been asked about this. I think we've talked about this when we first had you on, but for those that didn't, may, might not be aware that maybe watched you play. Why did you choose to go into pitch, co uh, being a coach pitching wise versus a hitting coach? Cause you could have done both. You, we've <laughs> talked about this. You had, you know, done both. What was it about the pitching side that you, that you like so much? Cause I can hear it in your voice even now talking about it. There, <laughs> you like it. So if you would have asked me, this would have been my, I would have been a pitching coach. I would have said, you're crazy. Um, I did not pick it. Uh, honestly, I, I was playing pro. I was in Florida. I helped Beth train his old high school at Dr. Phillips when I lived there, when I was, you know, working for Don and my second year, uh, Maryland needed a pitching coach. Uh, Kelly Crutchman, a good friend wanted to possibly get into coaching. They offered her the volunteer too. And I was like, 
she was like, just, I'm like, I don't want to be a pitching coach. She's like, just, you're, you're, you know, you're good. You're a good hitter, you know? And I'm like, all right. So went up there and, um, that year we, you know, really one pitcher, Kendra, my senior, and, uh, we got to postseason. We went to Washington, uh, to an out, but Hey, we got to postseason and the ACC. And, um, you know, every time when I did lessons, I even took a break from college coaching. I went in Wichita, I did hitting, pitching, fielding, you know, I did it all there. And then Murph calls me and he's like, Hey, Georgia tech, you know, they need a pitching coach. I'm like, Murph, like, you know, and he's like, I really think the city, I think it would be great for you. Just go interview and try it out. And I'm like, okay. So I go and sure enough, I go there and I'm the pitching coach. And so I think, um, you know, offensively, um, I loved hitting. I, I just, I did. That was always my passion. Um, anyone you ask, um, hitting, you know, in the league, I didn't pitch. I retired pitching in the league. I only hit and played first. That was my passion. Um, pitching, I was competitive. And being a lefty, not that I could get away with some things, but I was a competitor. I, com- I just competed. And so if the team needed somebody, I was going to pitch. Um, that's why in, in, at Alabama, I was hurt. You know, I didn't care how much, I, if the team needed me to pitch, I would do it. And, and Murph knew that. And so I think I had to work hard at development to develop as a pitcher. Um, I had those big surgeries in college. I had to relearn how to walk. I had to relearn how to pitch. And so hitting, I had to just stand tall, right? Like learn how to turn my, my pivot foot a little bit, but um, your hand eye, you know, I did a lot of work seated, but that's more hand eye. You know, I, I just hit a lot. Um, but pitching, I really had to learn. And so I think that because I had to relearn to pitch every year in college because of my surgeries, I think that helped me. And I think doing lessons, um, I just, I, you can hear, I, I love the game. And any way that I can give back, any way that I can continue to grow is what I want. That's why I continued to go do the AU in the summer um, is because I get to learn from the best, you know, and then they learn from me. Like it's, it's, it's just, I love it. And, um, you know, so God's calling was for me to be a pitching coach and um, I trust him on that. And, you know, I get my cup filled. I mean, you know, I'm there with the hitters. I'm there, you know, I help and assist our, um, you know, coach Bergeron's lead in my offense, but um, I like to bring the mentality. I feel like I can help them that aspect. I can see things, you know, I can help them in those things. Um, so I'm always going to do that. You're not going to shut that off. Um, do I think I'll always be a pitching coach my whole career? I don't know. Um, I said if I was going to be a head coach, I didn't want to be a pitching coach because pitchers take so much time. <laughs> um, as you know, I'm sure you've talked with, you know, the head coaches that are pitching coaches. Um, you know, the team, they're like, we want her too, you know, and and that's something I'm learning how to manage. I'm learning how to manage being a head coach, being a pitching coach. Um, and so, I but I will never, and I've made this, my rule of thumb, I will never shortchange our pitching staff unless someone comes in that I trust that can do it. Um, and, you know, with the fourth coach now, you're seeing a lot of head coaches be more managers. You know, I don't think I could ever do that. Um, I like hands-on work. You know that. I um, I like to work with our players. So, um, but someone eventually came in and when I opened a pool, if I had a hire and it was wow, you're solid. You can go in and do the staff. I don't mind moving. I'll go. Do, I don't mind whatever, you know, I played out, I've done everything. So for me, I just want what's best for the team now, um, which is, is unique to be in that situation as a head coach, you know? Um, but I would have never told you, I did not like pitching. It was no, like I did not like pitching, but I'm good at it. I can pick things apart. I can see things. I'm very good at it. Um, I don't like to talk about it because it's like, I think that well, it helped you get thing. to a head coaching job. I mean, <laughs> it it did. I mean, that's not an accident. Uh, pitching coaches are a lot harder to find than hitting coaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and, and it, a lot of times pitching coaches get a quicker path to the being a head coach. Yeah, we're, I do. I think that pitchers, it is tough. I think pitching coaches, it's a hard job. You take the wins and losses. Like your head coaches take it, but man, like, you know, the pitchers are right there with the loss or the win. 
and everyone's going to say we called the wrong pitch. Everyone's going to say, you know, and it takes a strong personality to be a solid pitching coach at our level. And, and, you know, with right now, social media and the scrutiny and like, you've got to be able to silence the noise. Um, but I just, I, I'd hope just on this saying is I hope that the pitching coaches get their, get their advice, get their help. Um, and know that it's not just theirs because I think you see a lot of good pitching coaches leave the game because it's a lot. Um, but we have to stay in it. Our girls deserve it. Our sport deserves it. Um, and there's a lot of good pitching coaches out there. We just got to make sure that we're giving them time to develop too. Who was the coach that you went to for advice when it comes to the pitching side? So um, Beth Tarina was one of my big, she coached me in the pro league too. Um, and then I used some of the similar stuff from Van Sudeman, who was my coach. That's right. Um, and, you know, me and Steph Van Brakel were very similar, obviously. So those are kind of my three that I, I've always kind of reached out. And then I do reach out. Um, Kat Oshman has been one of my big, we bounce ideas. And then um, actually of late, Rachel Garcia, who's coming to our preseason bank. She's been one that I've picked um, her brain apart and, I've helped, you know, a lot of the pitchers in AU too. Um, and they just continue to help me and grow me. So, but those were kind of the coaches early. And then to be honest, I, I'm a sponge. I, I try to learn off everyone. I, I look at anything people post. I see it. I look at it. I, I just try to continue to learn. Talk about your offense. Uh, who are some names mm -hmm. that people can uh, keep in mind for the upcoming, when they see your team play that you expect to help uh, contribute to your offense? Yeah, I think, you know, we have um, Kaylee Scusha that's coming back. She was all conference. Um, Michaela Carmen, um, she's back. They're both juniors. We also have Shaylin Watman, you know, our senior. Um, you know, they're all conference players too. And so we have them coming back and uh, we have some good freshmen. Um, some of our Hawaiians, I think, you know, Milwaukee, Jersey. Uh, we have We have some good um freshman in here and then you know i think um kinsey keela um she's going to be a good one i think to keep an eye out and Lisa chavez um she's going to be one to you know look out so i think we have we have a lot of different tools um you know we have some good returners um you know if maya stays healthy um you know but i think as a whole we have some good power we have some good good things coming back from experience too not just our, our returners, our, our transfers are going to come in and, and play a role. And then our freshmen, they're going to play too. Um, you know, Sydney, our shortstop that's been the last couple of years. Um, she, she's been coming like this. She's having a great fall. So they're all working. I can tell you, you know, our offense is working hard um, every day and, and it's fun to see and, and, you know, get that support. When you go back to the big West, I thought it was a dream, unbelievable race last year. Mm -hmm. Long Beach State makes the NCAAs. Cal State Fullerton gets in as the at-large. They had a great season as well. You were right there with them. Then you have programs like UCSB and the job that Joe Evans has done building that program up. As coaches in that league, there ought to be a lot of pride with the success from last year. I know you want more. That was a pretty successful year to get a multi-bid NCAAs. You got into postseason, et cetera. A lot of growth there for the league moving forward. Yeah, I think, you know, there's no reason uh someone i came into this conference where we play too good of conference we we play too good of teams that we're not getting a two-bid team or you know us and um davis got into the nisc so you know went four and it's been awesome to have joe evans go to santa barbara just i mean the the change and the level that has been there um you know and to get a hole is to raise our conference up you know and we, we have such decorative student athletes. And so, um, you know, I said, I told him we're going to schedule hard. We are, <laughs> we're going to prepare because we, you know, yeah, I need wins that everyone wants wins, but I'm not going to be afraid of playing tough competition. And I think that what you see in the big West is Fullerton's always done that. Right. That's why they got in, they got in because of their preseason. And then also because, our RPI helped them, you know, Davis's RPI helped him, Santa Barbara, like all of our RPIs helped them. And so um, in the end, we're helping each other. And so I think you saw, you know, even San Diego, I mean, everyone is is competing. And so I think raising that level within our conference that um, 
if we want multiple bids, we got to play. We, we, we've got to play tough teams and we've got to win some. Right. And, um, and so I think it's, it was really awesome. I mean, the support, you know, Kelly Ford, cause I was at Fullerton for a semester before I came here and she's been a big mentor for me. Um, being a mom, being a single mom, um, I've looked at her and, and her growth and her leadership. She leads me and, um, having her as a close mentor. Um, but everyone in the conference has been just open arms um we challenge each other you know I'm not afraid to challenge them Joe's not afraid to challenge this conference and um all of our goal is for the same goal is to make this a stronger conference to get more of us in the postseason like that's the that's what we should be doing um and so um I'm excited I, I like being a part of this conference where we're at I feel like everyone has a a little different burn and um, you know, and um, for me, I've never been on this coast. I'm from here, but I've never been a part of the Big West. I've been ACC, Big 12, you know, Sunbelt. Um, so it's it's been unique for me to learn these ways out here um, with everyone knowing me. And I know quite a few of them, too. But I've learned how to coach at a Cal State. You know, I've learned how to the loopholes that we or you not loopholes, but the the hurdles we have being out of Cal State so um I'm excited I think um I can I hope I speak for the conference that we're all excited for what everyone's doing and we're super excited to get that conference tournament um in 25 um to be able to have that you know at the end of our season which you know every conference almost has their conference tournament so we're we're excited to to get that here soon for our student athletes I know that's still being worked on, so there's not much else to say about it, except there is going to be a tournament coming. Mm -hmm. it was part of the motivation there is to help also be a multi beat league, that, that having a, a poke, because you've, you've participated in it throughout your career. Is that Was that part of the motivation to get, hey, let, you know, let's try this tournament to help us be more consistently a multi bid league? I think it's more of being consistent across the nation. I mean, almost okay. every conference has a, a tournament, and so – you know, sometimes, you know, our, our conference has been pretty, the, the margin has been pretty big, right? Like this year it was the closest with the three of us all. And even we were all Davis, we were all there. I think this is the closest year we've had. Um, but before you cannot lose a series, you know, if Fullerton Long Beach runs away, it goes down to those two, you know? And so I think it's, it's bringing one, the parody back, but two, our girls should have something to play for. Um, our student athletes, they work so hard. Um, every other conference has a conference tournament. And I think it was only us, baseball and volleyball, um, women's volleyball that didn't have their conference tournament in Big West. And so it's really even the playing field, um, giving them something to play for. You still got to play good enough to get in it. Not everyone goes, you know, and, and all those details will be coming out. But I'm excited. Um, I think it's good. Um, you know, when I played, the tournament was a little different for me. Um, because I was hurt. Um, so, you know, it was a little different for, for me, but I think that I love seeing, cause you know, I worked for ESPN and I, I did that. So I was part of all that selection stuff. And some of those games that last, that matters. Some of those wins yeah. is a difference of hosting, not hosting, you know, where you fall. So I love it. I love that you get that championship mentality started within the conference um, I think it's exciting to get them together. You know, it's what you work hard for. I love the SEC tournament, getting everyone and, you know, it's like you get to see everybody again. It's, it's, it's to me, I loved it. Um, and then it's like, all right, now it's go time, right? If you get into it, you're, it's third season's on its way, you know, and, and that's that mentality. So hopefully we're bringing that to the big West. You mentioned you worked at ESPN at one point. You see, you're good at this. This is why you should have your own podcast. If you ever decide <laughs> to retire from coaching, you could do your podcast. Because uh, you did ESPN from 2011 to 2013, mm -hmm. and you started getting into coaching, which is why you left it, because uh, you pursued it full time. We got two people uh, this offseason that is going the from broadcasting to coaching. Francesca and Ed, who you competed with. Uh, those Florida-Alabama battles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for legendary matchups. Uh, she joined the Florida Gators staff. And then your former teammate, Caleb Bro, is leaving ESPN to join Pat, Pat, Mur Coach Murphy's staff, taking over for Allison Habits, who retired after 25 years, which that in <laughs> itself is unbelievable. 
Uh, first of all, let, let's start. Let's start with that. What was your reaction when you heard Coach Habits was retiring? Were you shocked? Because uh, a lot of people, some people are going to feel like it's going to be weird not seeing her around as far as in the dugout. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really lucky. Um, Allie was kind of my person uh, when I played. Um, and she she sent me a, a text before it was released. And I, I really appreciated. Uh, she didn't want us to be, you know, blindsided. And I think... Um, at first I was nervous because she's like, I'm sorry, I have to do this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like what happened to you? You know, that's like what I'm, and I'm like, oh my God, like everyone that knows Coach Ali knows that she is the most selfless human being in the world. And for her to have the opportunity to go home, to take care of her mom, no one, if anyone ever had any ounce of not feeling supportive or happy for her, like, you don't know Allie. And I think she has worked her butt off for the University of Alabama. She's continued to be there for us as alumni. She's one of my close people that I still talk to. And she still will be that. And, you know, she's really strong in her faith. Um, and so am I. And that's something we connected. And, you know, I'm proud that she listened to God. I'm proud that she listened to what she needed. She never put herself first ever. It was always us. It was always Alabama softball and her family. And I feel like for once she put herself first and I think she deserves it. She's earned it. And I couldn't be more proud. I'm going to be sad, but the great thing is she's going to be at games. You don't think you're going to hear her in the stands. She's going to follow everything. Like she's not going anywhere. Um, but I think it's just, I'm, I'm so happy for her. Like I think, and that's what you hear from all the alumni. And even when we got to do that video for her, it's just like, I'm so happy. I'm just, I'm proud. I'm just, she's, she deserves it, you know? And then, you know, Murph hiring, it's like, okay, now who's he going to take? And I'm like, please in house, please, you know? And it's like, Kayla, bro, like, that's perfect. Like you can't, Kayla is a little bit, you know, like Allie was all, she wanted to win. Like Allie was a competitor. She was like sweet, but she's a competitor. And then you, so is bro. You know, I got to play with Caleb bro a couple of years and, um, you know, I obviously I was always scared of me and she, she just was awesome. And, um, I've continued to talk with her through and I'm just like, man, he have, he didn't, he couldn't have gotten a better hire than Caleb bro. She loves Alabama softball. She's an outfielder she's going to bring a whole different perspective to that program from the stat side of being an analyst. There's a whole different thing that she's going to bring that Alabama softball has not had. Um, and so, and she's a, she's very confident in what she does and you have to be a confident um, woman to go into Alabama softball to take Allison habits position. If you are not, you're going to have a hard time. And, and, and I think I, I'm so happy. Like I sent and put this to you. She's like, you don't know that, how much that means to us. And, um, you know, it's a tough loss for having Allie, but when you, you, you put her in with Kayla, bro, it's like, man, to me, I know God has that program. He's taking care of us. He's taking care of them. And I'm ecstatic for those players. I'm, I'm ecstatic for that coaching staff to learn from bro. Um, cause I think that there's going to be new things that that program is going to be seeing and utilizing than they've ever before. Um, and so I think it's, it's really awesome. Um, and you know, Francesca and there got to play against her, but then I got to play with her in the pro league on the pride. Um, so a rival to a teammate, you know, and, um, I just, she's the same. She bleeds the Florida Gators. She always has. And her husband, you know, he's, he works as broadcast and, I think I'm, I'm, it's just so awesome to see her come in the game. Um, when I was at AU and, and Francesca made that, I was like, oh, it's just a breath of fresh air when you see great players come back to the game. And I think anyone that you can talk to, they're going to be ecstatic to have that because it's just, for me, it's like, I'm excited. The game's going to continue to grow from the best, you know, and those players are getting a little, they they've won it they've done it you know both of them and so I think it's great for both of those programs to have them come in from having completely different backgrounds from their work but being in the game 
Kayla Bro, we had on the show mentioned that this was the one job that she would go into coaching mm-hmm. for. She was happy doing the broadcast, and that was hard for her to let that go. She had mm-hmm. been doing some Seattle Mariner games this this season uh, as well. And, you know, what is the biggest adjustment? Because you've done this. You went from, mm-hmm. you know, wearing the headset, being in the studio, being in the booth, to coaching. What's the biggest adjustment that Kayla and Francesca are going to have to make going from broadcasting to coaching? And what, what does the broadcasting aspect – help you as far as the coaching because I got to believe there's some advantages there yeah I think you know from the first I think the advantage I can tell you is when you're behind the scenes you get all the data you see all the tendencies you're doing all those interviews they they're they're knowing and picking people's brains apart right for their story so that they have a better understanding of what is OU's mentality how did how are you you know you're not going to give them but they're looking at all of that And so I think that's the advantage that they're bringing in is they get all the data. They get all that, you know, especially like the Mariners. Like I know Caleb bro was saying like the stuff that they've used there, but learning, you know, who they need to and not to with information. I think that's going to be an adjustment is do I think they both can coach 100%, but they're going to have to learn, okay, what's too much, what's too little, who can handle what, who can handle this. Um, because I think that's something that I had to learn um, is not everyone is is like us, right? Not every. And so understanding their personalities, understanding what they need when they do something wrong, what they need when they're doing success. Um, are they visual? Are they audio? Are that can they handle a lot? So I think them finding that I think is a big. And then I think the other big component is when you're you get to leave the game, like you do all your prep but you're not emotionally tied to it as much um, because you're calling the games. I will tell you being a a single mom with a daughter is I've had to learn when I go home, I have to go home. And I think that both of them, they, they prep, they could prep at home, but they can still, because there's no emotions. Well, what if you just lost the walk off and you're bringing that emotion home and your daughter is, or, you know, both of them have kids and they have husbands. And so it's like, I think if I could give them any advice is find your time management, set your boundaries, you know, have your clear cut communication. Our work never stops now. Their work could stop in the off season. Their work doesn't stop now. It's, it's 24 seven as a college coach. If a kid calls and it's emergency, you're answering. Right. And so I think, you know, that balance and I think just, you know, setting those firm boundaries to make sure that they don't burn out here or say, oh man, I want to go back to broadcasting because I don't feel like I'm present with my kids right now. I don't feel like I'm present with my husband at home. You know, Um, yeah, the program is, you need a lot. And they're at big programs that are dealing with name, image, and likeness and the portal. And so it's never stopping, but finding the balance, um, hoping their head coaches understand that as them coming from families. Um, and then, like I said, I think the other aspect is, is understanding their players and, 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 and their message to them. Um, I think are their two big adjustments. It's going to be fascinating to see how they look there and they do in the dugouts. That's going to be a lot of fun, but you know, you are one of the few that can relate to what they're going yeah. through. Uh, Cause they both also are moms. And, you know, like you mentioned, family is a part of this that kind of gets lost sometimes by the public. Yeah. Uh, in that regard a couple last things before i let you mm-hmm. go you mentioned athletes eliminate you're still involved with them you help them out uh during the summer what, what has that experience been like for you i know last time we had john you, you literally arrived in chicago mm-hmm. getting ready to help out for those that may not be aware you help out th- through their seasons what has that experience been like i don't even know how to make it it's just amazing um you know, my career got cut short from injuries and uh, I get to go and every season I connect with some players um, I connect with all of them. They're one, they're amazing people. Um, a lot of people see them on cameras or the, the, you know, the games, right. And they see their personality as competitors, but to see them off the field um, and see them for who they are is really unique. Um, and it's been awesome just to see all their personalities and, and, really get close to quite a few. Um, and you know, there's a couple of them that have struggled, um, at that level and I've, um, helped them, uh, just, you know, 
one of them, I you know went to a random place in Oklahoma through live to a hitter and was, she was struggling in, after a UX and, you know, it's 115 degrees, but they're human too. And so I think that being able to give them that vessel of like another brain, another coach, I've played at the pro level. I've been an all American. I've been, you know, the best of the best. And then now you're here now what? And they're still going to struggle. You know, social media is totally different. Um, the game is totally different. Um, and so I think for me, just being able to connect with them and like I said earlier, you know, Rachel Garcia, my, my connection, I would have never in a million years thought I'd be as close as I am. Alyssa Denham is one of them, you know, Odyssey Alexander Deja. I mean, just Aaliyah Andrews. I could just keep going on. Assist Bates. They're just amazing people. It fills my cup. They challenge me. Um, and then they challenge me to speak up. You know, they want to hear me. They want to hear my experiences and um, my knowledge. And, you know, I, I go up there, I throw BP to them. You know, I'm working with I, I, I just all of them. Megan Wiggins, I've, no, I've known for a long time, you know. And so for me, it, it fills my cup. Uh, it challenges me. It keeps me going. Um, and then it just makes me a better coach, but also a better person. And I can tell you that Athletes Unlimited gives those athletes everything that they need to be successful from care on and off the things that they do to equipment. Um, they are treated very well. And um, I'm, it's so awesome to see our sport and some of our athletes get treated that way um, because they deserve it. And so that, that in a nutshell um, is why I will always continue to help. <laughs> Megan Wiggins, we could spend another podcast talking about her. We could spend yeah. another a podcast on her, uh, talking about yeah. her career and how lengthy it is. Last thing before we let you go, yeah. for this team, for CSUN, for the competing, you know, Big West Championships and to get that next step, what are some of the keys for your team to accomplish your goals as you now finish, you know, continue on here to the fall and before you know it, the season will be here? You know, I think it's just keep keep building on our our mentality and 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 who we are as a unit. And um, we've asked them to stay in a space of vulnerability, to grow together, and to trust each other, and to continue to do it as a team and and for season softball. And so, um, you know, putting our nose down, focusing on ourselves, doing everything that we need to do. Um, we have the pieces here to do it, and now it's just gonna it's not gonna be handed to us. So continue to grind, continue to grow. Um, and, you know, we tell them sky's the limit. If we keep the game 60 feet in a left turn, if we make the game bigger than it needs to be. That's when it's going to get crazy. So um, continue to trust us. We'll trust them. And I think that that's going to be the, the exciting piece to stay hungry and I'm um, excited to see what our future looks like. We will look forward to that once you get on the field. Uh, but you. in the meantime, uh, thank you so much. I know it's a busy time, but uh, you're of one course. of our favorites, and uh, you can see why. We can, I'm telling you, we that's why we're going to bring you on every few months. We just <laughs> there's too many things we could talk about that we just can't right? fit in one episode. <laughs> but uh, I'm I, like I said, I follow you closely. You know that because I've texted you after games. Yeah. So you yeah. know I'm not making that up. <laughs> uh, so I, I know you know I'm rooting for you from afar. Thanks for doing this. Like always, uh, it's a blast to talk to you, and we, we will definitely uh, be talking soon. But uh, good luck, and uh, like I said, uh, thanks for coming on. Thank you again. I appreciate it, you know, not just myself, but our program and our conference. So, And I just want to thank you for everything that you do for our sport. You're you're a big voice, but you you do it in the right way. So I just I, I want you to know that I thank you for that, and I appreciate you. And um, thank you again. And I look forward to the next episode. <laughs>